Hello, welcome and a very good evening. And today we want to have a look at the renovation sound card, which you might know because we assembled this thing a couple of weeks back. If you have missed that, there was a live stream and I'll put a link down in the description and put an info card up there. And yeah, what is it all about? It is a replica of the innovation sound standard which is a very obscure PC sound card from the 1980s. The important thing about this sound card is that it was powered by the Commodore SID chip, which was originally built into the Commodore C64. And this is what makes this thing basically interesting. And right here we have currently a not a real SID chip, but a SwinSID Nano on there. And there are different solutions for this thing because original SID chips, either the 6581 or the 8580, are actually pretty rare nowadays. They break very easily and they cost anywhere between 30 and 70 euros, depending on which year and model they are. And that is, of course, pretty expensive for an obscure sound card. And all in all, there were maybe a dozen games that support the sound card. So it's probably not worth it for playing games, but it might be interesting for programming purposes. You could code um, SID music under MS-DOS, for example. And then the question is, um, what is the best SID chip for this thing? Of course, an original one would be nice, and we will test one, because I have one here. And also a SwinSID Nano and the ARMSID, which is a different emulation device, basically. Because what these things do is um, the SwinSID Nano uses an Atmel microprocessor or microcontroller to emulate the SID chip and output all the sound on one of its GPIO pins. And the ARMSID uses an STM32 based ARM chip, which does basically the same. The differences are accuracy in emulation as well as cost. The SwinSID you can build from parts for around 5 euros. However, if you want to buy a fully assembled version, it's somewhere between 10 and 20 euros, depending on who's selling this and yeah, where you buy it, basically. The ARM set is a little bit more expensive. It's 27 euros plus shipping, and it's not open source. The SwinSID is open source, so everyone can build one. The ARM set is currently proprietary, but has a few advantages slightly better emulation, etc. So what we'll do now is have a look at the different SID chips, what they sound like in a couple of games, and uh, yeah, so let's do that. Okay, what was that all about? You heard in the recording of Ultima 6 that the Swin SID sounds out of tune compared to the other two SID chips. I'm not quite sure why this is happening, actually. I, it's probably because of the emulation, um, maybe. Also because the one is emulating the PAL version, the other the NTSC version, I'm not sure. The ARM SID seems to be more correct because I'm using an original SID chip and it sounds more or less indistinguishable, at least from the pitch, compared to the ARM, uh, ARM SID. The SWIN SID, on the other hand, sounds a bit shifted, um, I think a little bit lower. And yeah, this is on itself not really noticeable, except maybe you have 
pitch perfect hearing, which I don't. But if you switch between the recordings, you notice that, which won't be the case usually because you will only have one SID chip in there at a time. However, um, that being said, it's interesting that there are audible differences that even I can hear. But other than that, I thought both the SwinSID and the ARMSID sound reasonably well, at least for Ultima 6. It would be nice to have more software that supports the renovation sound card, which is currently not the case. Uh, we will have a look at a couple of other games, and there are not that many, but a few that support that. And maybe in the future some new software will come along. At least it will be pretty easy to code for the chip. There's a lot of information about programming with the chip and you can just simply send stuff to the port that the card is listening to. For example, this is currently jumper to 280 hex and you could just fire up basic and send commands to the SID chip. So maybe we will hear something in the future. I think there are one or two video game music players that can play SID tunes with that. There's also a DOS version of the device emulator that can use this card. However, you need a very fast Pentium 2 or something for that to be useful because the Commodore 64 is actually pretty hard to emulate. So you need a pretty fast retro PC for that. Yeah, other than that, um, I will show you a couple of more games now. And as you can hear, the SwinSID actually has a different pitch than the other two SIDs. So I took the audio from Ultima 6 and imported it into Audacity. I normalized all the volumes more or less so that it sounds the same, but you can already see at the waveform that the chips definitely produce different output with the 6581 at the top, then the arm sit, and then the swin sit. So let's start with the swin sit and switch around between the different voices and you can definitely hear the pitch shifting right away. So we can actually code for the SID chip under MS-DOS and you don't need anything extra except from what MS-DOS offers. Here we are using QBASIC but GWBASIC will work just as fine I think. And if you didn't know, in QBASIC and GWBASIC you can write to hardware ports using the OUT command and the IN command for reading. And we don't have any fancy auto detection here but we simply set the port to hexadecimal 280, that's what my renovation song card is set to. Then we can write to the different registers of the SID chip. And I copied this basically from a C64 magazine where they taught how to code for the SID chip. But we can use that for MSTOS as well. You just have to adjust the addresses of the chip. Because on the C64 it's memory mapped and here we use I.O. ports. So we select the port plus 24, this is the 24th register, and it will choose the volume for the tone that we are generating. Then we are setting a, uh, an ADSR hull curve basically for the, or envelope for the sound, a very basic one. You can tweak that and you have to look up the actual register values. Then we set the frequency for voice number one and this should be a nice mid-pitch tone. I'm not sure how much this will be. There's a frequency multiplier. We can look that up later. And then we set the waveform to be a sawtooth, which sounds a bit harsh and more interesting. We can also set it to a triangle wave or a square wave. And then we wait for the user to press return to stop that, and then we shut down the voice so that it doesn't continue to beep. Yeah, and that should actually work. And we can of course do much more with the SID chip, but I'll save that for a Let's Code episode or live coding or something. Uh, but for now this should be enough. Let's run that program.
Yeah, it works and you can probably hardly hear myself over the thing, so I press return to stop the voice, which works equally well. So that's pretty nice. You need only four lines of code, more or less, to uh, send some stuff to the SID chip to get some sound out of there. And I think this is very promising, so I hope we can code more for the SID chip in the future. For now that should be it. Uh, let's have a look at some more games and their support for the renovation sound card. The next game is Microprose's Red Storm Rising, a submarine simulation from 1988, and it supports the SID chip quite well, as you can hear now. Interplay's Lord of the Rings role-playing game is a special beast because it supports quite a few sound options, but uh, the innovation sound standard is only supported for sound effects and for music it will use the PC speaker or the adlib or whatever you have in your system. So here are only two examples of digitized sounds that you can hear through the SID chip. Windwalker is another pretty obscure game by Origin, and Origin as well as Micropose were actually the two main companies driving the innovation sound standard. And Bad Blood is another role-playing game by Origin, a little bit like Fallout, the setting is similar. And yeah, Origin is definitely one of the great drivers behind this sound card. Okay, those were all the games that I wanted to show you. There are a bunch more and there are a few that I couldn't get to work with the chip. For example, Jeopardy was supposed to work with the renovation sound card and it actually has that in the settings but I couldn't get anything out of it except for some beeps and I'm not sure if that was from the PC speaker or from the sound card itself. So that was a fluke, basically. But I think this is still a very interesting card, especially if you want to get into SID programming on sort of real hardware and you already have a retro PC and not a Commodore 64, like I don't have a 64. And for this it's actually a nice thing to have. But it's definitely not for everyone because it's a very obscure device. But for today, I think that's enough. And please make sure to hit the like button or the dislike button if you thought this was not a very interesting video. Leave a comment for sure and uh, subscribe if you didn't. You can also support me via Ko-Fi or Patreon or PayPal or whatever. If you don't, that's totally fine. I get that we are all in a very difficult situation at the moment with the pandemic and everything. So I hope you stay safe. Yeah, see you next time then. Yeah.